Hi friends! In this video, I am going to be making a week's worth of 1950s salads, none of which are actually salads. There's gelatin, there's marshmallows, and there's somehow always mayonnaise where there shouldn't be mayonnaise. I kind of need someone to check up on the 1950s housewives and ask if they're okay. I will be cooking solely from the Better Homes and Gardens salad book, which says it has new salad ideas for every occasion, and I don't know what occasion calls for marshmallows, mayonnaise, and oranges in the same recipe, but we are going to find out together. If your past few weeks have been anything like mine, you are probably craving a few moments of calm for your week. So I hope you enjoy the cozy vibes, the homemaking interspersed between the recipes, and watching me make some potentially insane 1950s housewife jello molds. One of the things that I got myself when I was shopping for this video were some new bird feeders. We have a lot of finches and hummingbirds and woodpeckers and blue jays and just a plethora of wild birds around our home. So I wanted to put out some bird feeders for them all to enjoy. If you are curious about the feeder for the hummingbirds, it is just sugar water. It is very easy to make at home. You just need to boil some water, add, uh, I believe it's one part sugar to four parts water, let it cool down and then pour it into the feeder and you're done. And then you will have some hummingbirds come to your home. But let's get into the recipes for the week and we are starting out with the recipe that is the most nostalgic for me because this is a recipe that my grandma used to make for every family gathering. For this recipe you will need three quarters of a cup of diced orange, two flecked with brown bananas sliced, a half cup of seedless grapes, one quarter cup pitted dates cut up, three tablespoons of lemon juice, a quarter cup of flaked coconut, and then we will also be making creamy mayonnaise as well as adding marshmallows because that is how my grandma always made it. But we are going to start out by making the creamy mayonnaise recipe which calls for one half cup of heavy cream whipped and folded into one cup of mayonnaise until well blended. I also added a little bit of sugar because I always remember my grandma's ambrosia salad being sweet and simply beating a half cup of whipped cream will not be sweet. This is absolutely the first recipe that made me question everything about the 1950s and the addition of mayonnaise to an otherwise fruit dish. I'm getting the feeling that mayonnaise was added to play on the sweet and savory thing that is supposedly something you want. And once you have diced and sliced all of your fruit, you will add it to a bowl with the three tablespoons of lemon juice and then stir. Fold in the creamy mayonnaise dressing and if you'd like to make it the way that my grandma did, add about a cup of marshmallows. You can serve this topped with some sweetened flaky coconut, which I think really does add to the flavor. 
It's quick and easy to make, especially if you buy canned fruit, and I believe my grandma used to buy mandarin oranges canned to cut down on the time making it, and it's a very pleasant dish. Now, I did combine a few recipes to make a full meal, so next we are making chicken in tomato towers. For this recipe, you will need two cups of cubed cooked or canned chicken, as well as one half cup of diced celery. And I will say right here that I would recommend dicing this much finer than I did. You will also need two tablespoons of chopped pimento, which you can generally find with condiments. And then one tablespoon of chopped or diced onion. For the dressing, you will need one half cup of mayonnaise combined with one half to one teaspoon of curry powder, as well as a teaspoon of lemon juice. Mix all of the ingredients together and chill while you Peel and cut the tomatoes crosswise into three slices. I did not peel the tomatoes because I felt like that would mess with the integrity of the towers, but here you can see me slicing them into three slices. I set aside the rest of the tomato for use later, and then I put together the tomato chicken towers on lettuce just to present it prettily. I wanted to copy the pictures of the dishes as well as I could. So after assembling all of my chicken and tomato towers, I took toothpicks and stuck some black olives on top just to present them like the photo. really honest I thought that the chicken and tomato towers would actually be good I really like tomatoes and so does the majority of my family actually I think everyone does but it was too much tomato and I never thought I'd say that it was just a little too much and I think I needed to dice the celery a lot finer just felt a little dry so I think if I were to remake those I would probably actually put it between bread uh, and do tomato slices and a much more mayonnaise-y uh, chicken salad with probably with onion or with uh, pickles instead of celery. I don't love celery. It wasn't like a huge fail. I just think it needed a few little tweaks. Um, the ambrosia salad tasted confusing. I somewhat liked it. I liked it for the first like t five bites. But, and this is the only time I'm ever gonna say this, I think it would have been better with Miracle Whip instead of mayonnaise. And the kind of mayonnaise that I buy, which I didn't think about this, is olive oil mayonnaise, which has a tangier, tangier flavor usually, a much more savory flavor than a lot of mayonnaise, mayonnaise which can be more bland. So I may have messed that up. What are your thoughts? Mm, it was not good. Mm -hmm. I was hoping for pizza. Oh. Too bad. Mayonnaise popsicles. Ew. What's next in the weird recipes? Here's a list. Can you read my handwriting? Rosy butt, cocktail, fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. Rosy butt cocktail. 
Now, I have been really craving adding a bit more of my homemaking to my channel. I say this a lot, I think, and then I get caught up in trying to make some fun, kitschy 1950s videos. But I think from here on out, I might try to make videos a little bit more like this one, where I am interspersing the 1950s content with my everyday and as you all know, for a homemaker, the work never stops. So after dinner, I had to start the laundry and I just have feelings about how I want my channel to be run. I am really craving a 1950s vintage homemaking vibe, but not so putting on a show. I would just like to share life and share my skills as a homemaker and in cooking and all of those things. So. The next morning, I thought I would film a little bit of cleaning up our steps, which have become a disaster. Uh, we have not really had much time to work around our house this summer so far because we were on vacation and then we've just had a lot of chaos happen. Uh, so I bought some new flowers to hang to make it look a little bit nicer and I also needed to pot this lavender and geranium and mint so we are going to do that together. I have been trying to run a successful garden since we moved here five years ago and I have been pregnant or carting around a newborn and a toddler for those entire five years but now that I am done having kids I feel like I can finally dedicate a little more time to gardening and planting things and potting plants and just generally making things grow around me so that is what I hope to do. And of course, I will be sharing any gardening shenanigans on my channel as we go. I would like to uh, ask everyone to ignore the chalk on the back of my dress from sitting on the dirty steps. I decided to spray clean the steps just because I do love my children's art all over our patio and stairs, but it tracks inside and makes a chalky mess. So it was time to give the porch a good clean. These steps are very old. They were put here when the house was built, I assume in 1900, maybe the 1920s when it was added on to. And as you can see, they are not in the best of condition. So we have been discussing lately whether we want to rebuild steps or whether we would like to add a little porch. I am leaning towards a little porch. I would love to have a porch to sit on in the mornings and drink my coffee. But, of course, that's a much bigger undertaking, um, so I guess we will see what happens. After I was done outside, it was time to make up something to hold my children over until lunchtime. So I thought I would do strawberries with fluffy fruit dip. And this is not technically a salad, but then are any of these recipes really salad? It is very simple and straightforward. You will simply combine one half jar of marshmallow cream with one teaspoon each orange and lemon juice and whip until it is very fluffy and then fold in a quarter cup of mayonnaise. Again, the mayonnaise is just rampant in places that it should not be. Mm -hmm. 
And I have to confess, I did not think this through. The marshmallow cream that I have is already whipped and fluffy, and so beating it with the rotary beater just made it fall and get creamy. So I decided to add some heavy whipping cream and whip it again in hopes that this would help it thicken up. And it worked, it worked quite well, and it also made a very delicious dip. Okay, for the sake of my kids, I did not put mayonnaise in the stuff that I gave them because I don't think they would eat it. And I'm skeptical after yesterday in the ambrosia salad. But I reserved a little bit for me and I did add mayonnaise to mine. So now I guess I have to try it. I'm a little bit afraid. I used different mayonnaise this time to see if it would help because the other mayonnaise that I used yesterday definitely had a very strong flavor and I don't know if that's... Hmm, well, we'll see. That's better. That's better than what I had in the ambrosia salad. Still not a huge fan of the flavor of mayonnaise with sweet things. Update. This dip with the mayonnaise is way better with bananas. Shockingly. Um, I decided to try it with a different fruit. Tastes a lot better with banana, so take that as you will. Now we are getting into what I feel is a very quintessentially 1950s recipe with rosy fruit cocktail slices. You will start with two, two three ounce packages of cream cheese, one cup of mayonnaise, and one cup of heavy cream whipped. Add in three and a half cups of fruit cocktail, one half cup drained maraschino cherries quartered, and two and a half cups of tiny marshmallows or large marshmallows cut up. Then you will add in some maraschino cherry juice or food coloring in order to add color. I tried to color this with maraschino cherry juice, but it just was not giving me the pink color that I wanted. So I did end up adding some pink food coloring and attained that pretty color. You will then put this into a container to freeze overnight. To serve, let it stand out a few minutes and then remove it from the container. Slice and place on crisp lettuce. Now, in the recipe, it also said to serve it with mayonnaise and celery seed dressing. So I did make the celery seed dressing, which is one half cup sugar, one teaspoon celery seed, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon dry mustard, one teaspoon paprika, one third cup lemon juice, and three quarters cup salad oil. You will beat this all until it is thick with a rotary beater. I used my immersion blender and made it similar to how I would make mayonnaise because it does help things get thicker. I then decided that I was going to decorate with my edible flowers and some mint as well as the cherries. And I was very excited to use this new to me thrifted set of 1960s dishes with dogwood on them. I think they are so beautiful. But I dipped my cocktail in water, hot water, to help it loosen up. And then I got to decorating. I think that this turned out so beautifully. It looks so pretty. And this is kind of what made me addicted to decorating with flowers. Okay. 
true to the book, I am going to try the celery seed dressing on top of it. I haven't tasted any of this, so I'm just gonna put it on, on a little bit uh, because I'm suspicious. It also said to serve it with mayonnaise, so I'm gonna take a little bit of mayonnaise. And just, uh, I don't know, you guys. I'm going to try it on its own first. The only flavor I got was marshmallow. So I'm gonna try the celery seed dressing side. Actually, it doesn't look pretty because it, there's paprika in it, and I feel like that's a little. It's like genuinely not bad at all. I actually like it better with the dressing on it. I'm gonna try a bite with mayonnaise as well. I really do not trust the mayonnaise at all, but it's so confusing. Very oddly, I really like the celery seed dressing on top. I think it adds a little bit of extra flavor that it needed. The next day, I decided it was high time I cleaned up the patio. We have not really had a lot of time to work outside, like I have said, this summer because we have been on vacation and we have been sick and a lot of things have happened in the last few weeks. But we have finally stopped needing to burn wood to heat our house, so I thought it was the perfect time to give the patio a very, very thorough cleaning. There was so much wood and dirt just all over the place. Here you can see I am also picking up piles of leaves and things that have been swept off the patio over the winter and the fall and the spring. And then my husband and I set about just thoroughly tidying up the entire patio, washing it down. In general, it was just very satisfying to do. Then rearranging things a little bit to be more efficient for the summertime. And I put flowers out here because they looked pretty. But with that done, it is time to make some potato salad. For this salad, you will need six cups of diced cooked potatoes. I used red potatoes because then I did not have to peel them, and that is my time-saving trick, if you will. You will also need one quarter cup of chopped green onions and my little tip for you here is to store your green onions in a jar of water on your counter. They will regrow and they will give you a continuous supply so that you don't really have to go back and buy more unless your cat knocks them over like ours does in their seeking of water uh, that is moving for some reason. You will also want one teaspoon of celery seed one half teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of pepper, and four hard cooked eggs. Then you will, of course, peel your eggs and you will want to separate the whites of your hard cooked eggs from the yolks and chop the whites up to add to the potato mixture and chill. I use our egg slicer to chop our eggs. I put them in both ways so that they would get chopped into little squares and it was very satisfying. I don't know that it saved me any time, but you will then want to put the hard cooked yolks in with one cup of sour cream, one half cup of mayonnaise, one quarter cup of vinegar, and one teaspoon of prepared mustard. 
This recipe also calls for three quarters of a cup of diced pared cucumber, but by the time I got to making this, we were all very hungry. We had just gotten home from garage sailing and I did not put in cucumber. I did also make some hard boiled eggs to go with this and it was a very delicious and very filling meal. I put some parsley on just for looks and this recipe I will absolutely save to make again. It was very, very good and very satisfying and the flavors worked so well together. And now we have come to the star of the show, which is the old time tomato aspic. For this, you will need one quarter cup of chopped celery leaves, one third cup of chopped onion, four cups of tomato juice, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of salt, two small bay leaves, four whole cloves, two tablespoons or envelopes of unflavored gelatin, one quarter cup of cold water, three tablespoons of lemon juice, and one cup of finely diced celery. Combine the tomato juice, onion, celery leaves, brown sugar, salt, bay leaves, and cloves, and simmer for five minutes. Strain, which I only just realized I was supposed to do. Soften the gelatin in cold water. Dissolve in the hot tomato mixture and add the lemon juice. Chill until it is partially set. I added it to my pink Tupperware. And then add the celery. Pour into a five or six cup ring mold and chill until set. Serve with chicken salad if desired. Now having only realized just now that I was supposed to strain out all of the things I boiled this with, I can understand that it was a little bit crunchier than it was supposed to be. However, uh, despite the fact that this is a gelatin mold and seems questionable, this may have been one of my favorite recipes of the week, and you will see my reaction later. But I wanted to serve this as closely to the photo as I could, so I bought some ham, and I put some celery and some carrots in cups with and uh, green olives and I made some hard-boiled eggs and I just generally tried to serve it as prettily as possible. Aspic flavor time. I would make this again. Mm. Yep, I would make this again. This is really good. So that is it from me. Uh, my outro that I recorded for this video had no sound and was not salvageable, so I will just say over this little montage of the week, that I really enjoyed putting this video together and I hope that you all enjoyed watching it. Let me know if you like this format of filming. I would really like to do this more. I think the older my channel gets, the more I am enjoying just sharing my home and homemaking and a little bit more calm moments for myself and everyone who watches. As always, if you would like to tip me for the work that I do here on the channel, it does go to fund videos like this where I have to buy ingredients or things to make videos for all of you. So you can find my Ko-Fi down below and you can find where to follow me on all of the social media as well. But I just want to say that I hope wherever you are, you are feeling safe and loved and fulfilled. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!